When I was a kid in school, I used to hate history classes. Now, after 50 years, history is my favorite subject, especially that of Islam and Muslims. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. When I read the history of young companions of our beloved Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I can see how Islam spread everywhere and how great were these young companions. Out from the desert in the middle of nowhere came a generation that brought light to this earth and dominated the two major superpowers of that time, both the Romans and the Persians. Their light lasted more than 14 centuries, and inshallah until the end of this world. This first generation of Muslim youth were truly a remarkable engine in the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here are a few names of the Muslim youth pioneers in this first generation. Ali ibn Abi Talib was 10 years old when he became Muslim. Talha ibn Ubaidullah was 14 years old when he became Muslim. Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was born Muslim, was 15 years old when the Prophet wasallam died. Said ibn Zaid was 15 years old when he became Muslim. Al-Zubair ibn al-Awam was 15 years old when he became Muslim. Abdullah ibn al-Zubair was the firstborn of the Muslim community in Medina after the Hijra. Muhammad ibn Talha ibn Ubaidullah was also born in Medina after Hijra. Saad ibn Abi Waqqas was 17 years old when he became Muslim. Abdullah ibn Masud was 16 years old when he became Muslim. Omar ibn al-Khattab was 26 years old when he became Muslim. Then there is Abdul Malik bin Umar ibn Abdul Azir, the great young Muslim who was watching all the actions of his father, Omar bin Abdul Aziz, the fifth rightly guided caliph. All young Muslims of the first generation had their ultimate teacher in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Their history is available in many history books. Each one of them is like a high tower of light to illuminate the present darkness of our Ummah. Alhamdulillah, now there are many good Muslims in many parts of the world. But there are many others who got themselves involved in un-Islamic and sometimes horrible behavior and characters. Muslim girls who convert from Islam thanks to their so-called Muslim parents who did not watch after their children. Muslim girls and boys who are involved in sexual relations with Muslims or non-Muslims before marriage. Muslim girl pregnancy out of wedlock is increasing in our present time. There is also the use of drugs and alcohol. Muslim youth will often go to university classes with mobile phones, but without any books and certainly no Qurans. The so-called Muslim media and many so-called Muslim actors seem to be on a mission to destroy the Islamic identity everywhere in Muslim countries. Somehow, most females, young and old on Arabic television, have blonde hair with Western hairdos and wear Western clothes, of course without wearing the hijab. It begs the question, have most Arabic girls been born blonde in the last 30 to 40 years? Many so-called Muslim singers are aggravating youth problems. I feel so disgusted when I see that thousands of Muslim youth are impressed by someone like Tamer Hosni, the born Muslim Egyptian singer with his sickening Western appearance and low-level songs. Then again, I am grateful to Allah that we have great Muslim singers like the convert Muslim Joshua of the group Native Deen in the United States of America and his great inspiring Islamic songs, such as Native Deen's not afraid to stand alone if Allah is by my side. Muslim youth should like or dislike somebody based upon his or her role in promoting or destroying Islamic identity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, help Muslim youth to see the light of Islam as the first youth generation did and reverse the downfall of our great Ummah. Amin. An invitation to volunteer in the Islamic Youth Awakening campaign is given below as well as in the email. 
please sign the Muslim Youth Code of Honor petition on www.petitiononline.com per below and given in the email. Jazakallah khair.